So you guys want to see something cool? So I journal a lot. As you know, on my website, I have like notebooks that you can purchase because I love notebooks. So I'm just sharing my passion with all of you. If you like to write, check out my website. I got some journals. This is not one that I created, but um, I did buy this one a while ago. I'm gonna be using as my travel journal, just things that I experience. So I made a section in here that for the Tiny Home and Nomad Festival. And let's see if I can get you guys to see more. Hold on. <laughs> because you guys can't see what's on my lap. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. So every vendor that I went, I got that I got their business card, got their website. And for the ones that I couldn't like glue to the paper, I just paper clipped it. Yeah. I thought this was cool. Yeah. some more. See? Isn't that cool? <laughs> so, let me lift y'all back up. Sorry, y'all. This is how filming goes, okay? It just be like that. So, with today's video, guys, I am going to share with you guys um, the tiny house that I really liked that I felt would be doable for me. And I'm gonna let you guys know the Class B RV that I really liked. And we're just gonna talk about, or I'm gonna talk about some takeaways that I got from the event. Cause I learned some things just by looking at the different making models of the vehicles, looking at different layouts and designs, talking to other people, hearing their experiences, hearing some of their pros and cons. It kind of made me think about if, you know, things that I will consider if I decide or, you know, to one, buy a tiny home and two, if I decided to upgrade my vehicle one day. Tiny home cottages was my favorite tiny house build. The tiny house looked big, but it's still considered a tiny house at 395 square feet of living space. That does not include the porch. The house felt more like a home. It gives you different rooms to go into, different turning points. It has a living room, dining area, full kitchen, bath and bedroom, and a separate place for a washer and dryer. It has everything that a normal house would have. And I looked on their website and they have different model options to choose from. This is my type of tiny living guys, right here. This is perfect. Uh, there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of cabinet space, what? two uh, sinks, yeah, stove. Yeah. Is this a dishwasher? It has a dishwasher, oven. Oh my goodness. And here is the bathroom. You don't feel claustrophobic in this place. Nice. You got. A shower, no tub, which is fine because, hey, that's good. You look like you have a real toilet. <laughs> a real toilet. It's different than those other Yeah. are in Nice. I like this. We're going to go take a look at the bedroom. Let's see. I guess this is where you would put your washer and dryer. 
That's what that looks like. Okay, here is the bedroom, guys. Nice little cozy little bedroom with a nice window. It has, and then a little bay area here. This looks like um, a queen size bed that you can fit in here. Plenty of closet space. Extra storage down there. Yeah, this is this is lovely. This is my type of tiny living. Like if I was to go tiny, something this size would be perfect. You <laughs> that tiny home was just absolutely beautiful. Especially, I think when looking into tiny houses for me, I can only speak for myself. You know, I got to think about my age what my body's gonna be like in the years to come. You know, I have bad knees already. So I learned that loft steps are not ideal for my life in the future, for sure. Um, and I learned about like, you know, long-term long -term residents, you know, uh, the tiny houses, I do love them, um, but the real small ones kind of would make me feel a little claustrophobic, and it doesn't give me the room that I would need um, uh, to explore my, create my creative side. You know, like I can see myself, I like books, so I need places for my books. Um, I do like to do crafts sometimes, so I need area to do crafts at. Um, and I felt like this particular tiny house, uh, I didn't have a lot of closet space, like a coat closet. I didn't see that at all. Um, but like I said, that was just one model that they have. If you look on their website, they have several different models to choose from and they're all so beautiful. So, yeah, I really, really, really like that, like their brands. Now, when I was there, um, they also had another company with them, and I'm not sure how that works. I think they may have been the builders of that home, and I think Tiny Home Cottages just sells them and that company it was called sorry guys i'm, I'm getting there <laughs> cabaco just to show you a little bit cabaco i hope i'm saying that right now, I checked out their website as well, and they have some really nice designs as well. Um, so, them two put together definitely would have everything that I'm looking for as far as tiny living. Now, I'm going to show you the Class B RV that I like the most. Nomadic Customs had the best layout that I felt would fit my lifestyle when it comes to class B RVs. They had space, plenty of storage, fixed bed. I really enjoyed the way that they built their class B RVs. Really have a lot of space. I don't feel claustrophobic. You know, especially if you're gonna spend money like this, definitely got enough space. The bed is stationary. You don't have to convert that. Storage underneath, you got your porta potty, extra storage, seating area, storage in there. And yeah. 
I like everything about this. Plenty of counter space for van living. Now, Nomadic Customs. I like their Class B RV the most. That was a Dodge Ram 2500. And I felt like they really utilized the space to its full capacity. There was plenty of storage, plenty of moving around. And my theory when it comes to like class B RVs, you gotta have enough room to dance. <laughs> if you don't have enough room to dance, don't get it, okay? But I really, really liked it. They had two different models there. They had the Dodge Ram 2500 and they had the Dodge Ram 3500. Now, the one thing that I will say about, I do like it a lot, don't get me wrong, but from a financial point of view, I can't see myself spending that type of money on a vehicle. And yeah, I think the 35, the Dodge Ram 3500 was, if not close to a little over, $300,000. I mean, it was nice. It was luxurious. It was great. Okay. But that's to me, everybody ain't got Kardashian money. You know what I'm trying to say? So yes, they're nice. And I did like it. Now, <laughs> when I went outside, I saw another Dodge Ram 2500 that a man had purchased and did the work himself. And his layout was point on, very, very close, very similar to Nomadic's custom Dodge Ram 2500 van. He did the work himself and it gave me the same vibe as the hundred and fifty thousand dollar one. <laughs> Lovely home. Thank you. You built this out yourself? I did. Yeah. I love it. That's the layout that I like. If you want to step in, you can. It gives you space. Yep. <laughs> I intentionally didn't do too many uh, upper cabinets, so it wouldn't feel like it was all on top of me. Definitely, I, I like. Just have and I live in full time, so. I like, I like. It's just me and the dog. And you don't have to convert your bed every day? Oh, I need a permanent bed. <laughs> a fixed bed, yeah, yeah, I understand that concept. And I do have and a shower. And you can stand all the way up. Yes. I have a shower, but it's not permanent. And it's... Uh, this, okay, this so is, your van build is similar to the guys, I think they're called Nomadic or something. I don't know what they're called. But oh, inside? Yeah, inside. Your van is built similar to theirs, which was one of my favorite builds. <laughs> I couldn't it gives, afford that. Neither I, can I. I had to do it myself. <laughs> so, like, to convert one of these, like, roughly I, estimated, like, what did you put into it? This is a 2016 I got it in 2019 and it had 16,000 miles. And it was 27,000, which is unheard of now. Things right. got so crazy. I think I'd probably put another, I'd say 22, 23, so I'm right about 50. That's still a lot better than $150,000. Yep, it's got, and I'm, I'm just over 43,000 miles now. Wow. So I expect to be living in it a long time. So if you kind of can compare and look at both, they're very similar in design, you know. Um, now, he spent pr probably about $50,000 for the vehicle and for the bill. Now, would you be able to do something like that? Really? The a lot of your money is going to really fall into the vehicle itself. Like, I looked online, you know, now Dodge Rams 2500 um, is roughly in the 30,000 range, you know, give or take. Um, I don't, that may be a little newer. You can sure there are some things that are older, 
And I think if you just learn how to design it and utilize the space, I think it's very doable. Now, do I know anything about building out a van? No. <laughs> I know nothing about hooking up electricity, um, wiring, installating. I, I know nothing about all of that. But one thing that that guy had said was he learned everything on YouTube. And yeah, some days are more frustrating than others. But he said it was... It was an experience, an enjoyable experience, and he knows his van inside and out. So those were my, um, that was my favorite tiny house and my favorite class B RV. And just speaking with a lot of the other nomad people that live in all sorts of different types of vehicle, um, because my main thing was like, um, how often do you travel and what do you do for work? And what I have noticed is that a lot of these nomads that live in like school buses and ambulance and semi trucks and box trucks and things of that sort, they're mainly self-employed or remote workers and I ask that question because the bigger your vehicle is the harder it's going to be to maneuver around town the harder it's going to be for you to find camping spots and the more your gas cost is going to be like my current lifestyle would not fit for a vehicle bigger than what I have because I do delivery type of jobs so I use my vehicle not only for van life, but also for work, you know? So if I ever got to a situation, my glasses are fogging up. If I ever got to a situation where um, I'm completely self-employed, um, then yeah, I can see myself upgrading to something where I wouldn't have a problem um, parking at a camp spot or finding some BLM land and being stationed somewhere for you know a longer period of time because I won't have to drive my vehicle so much so that's something to think about when choosing um, a vehicle is what type of lifestyle are you going to live what type of lifestyle are you gonna live are you going to have another vehicle that you can use like the box truck him and his wife have a box truck but they also have a car that they tag along you know for um getting into places that they that their box truck can't get them and just you know driving in and out of you know town from where they're camping at so things think you think uh blah blah blah, blah. things like that you need to think about also I, you know, some people have their home set up to where they can cook inside and some have it where they can cook outside and some have both. So thinking about your cooking arrangements is going to be very important to how you make your vehicle out. Um, like for me, I do both. I like to cook outside and I like to cook inside. I have the ability to do that. When I am cooking inside now, I do cook smaller meals, eat very simple and easy meals. And you know, one of the main reasons why I do a lot of cooking inside is because I like to cook and eat in peace without bugs <laughs> bothering me and flies bothering me. But that's just my personal life. That's just my tolerance and things like that. And then also you have to think about when the seasons change, you know, like now it's getting dark at, you know, 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the evening, you know. So if you're cooking dinner at 7 o'clock in the wintertime, more than likely if you're outside, you're going to be cooking dinner in the dark. So thinking about 
the weather, I mean, the, the seasonal changes with the time zones and all of that good stuff when it comes to cooking your meals. Now, as you can tell from part three of the videos, there were so many different types of vehicles. I mean, so many different types. So pretty much when it comes to purchasing a vehicle and converting it into your home, the sky's the limit. Your imagination is your only limitation, pretty much. You can convert almost anything into a tiny home. So it all depends on how small do you wanna go and how large do you wanna go. That's my take. That's what I got. I mean, someone went with the 18 wheeler semi truck. You know, and I forgot to ask that guy, bridge clearance, like, cause he raised the roof a little higher so they can stand up on the second floor. But I forgot to ask him bridge clearance, like, but apparently he's got that taken care of. Now a vehicle like that, nah, I can only imagine what his gas cost is on that baby. But him and his wife are retired. So they can go to BLM land and all, most BLM land allows you to camp at one spot for 14 days and then you move to a different spot. So with, their being, with, with them being retired, they don't have to travel back and forth, do a lot of traveling and things like that. I don't know if they have a different car for when they need to go grocery shopping and things, that, things like that, they may but I just couldn't imagine <laughs> hauling a semi truck everywhere I go. That's, that's a bit much for me. <laughs> um, and another important thing that you wanna think about if you purchase a vehicle um, to convert is what are you going to be doing for work? And whether you are remote work, self-employed, or whether you're going to an office, are doing delivery gigs, what are you gonna be doing for work? And how does that fit into your lifestyle? You know, like in my van, I can work in my van. You know, do I have a comfortable place to work at? How long can I work in that place and being comfortable? You know, um, are you gonna be driving your rig to your job all the time? Uh, so that's something to think about when choosing, I guess, a vehicle to convert into a home. Yeah, so that's my most takeaways that I got from it. And I really do think that the route to really go is just buying a vehicle and converting it yourself. I think you're gonna save so much more money. And then I think that it also gives you the ability to really create and make your home unique to your lifestyle. So that's my takeaway from the Tiny Home Fest. And you guys, it was a great experience. Um, why don't you guys check out their website because they have different fests, different events throughout North America. And they may or may not be coming to an area near you. Um, but yeah, check their website out. I think that going to these places and seeing these things are, you know, these tiny homes and class B's in person is definitely an eye opener. And it really gives you hands on experience of what tiny actually really means. And if you really can go tiny. The one mistake, you know, you don't want to invest into something that you think you will like because it looks nice and then you find yourself in a situation where you're feeling claustrophobic in your home you're uncomfortable in your home you outgrew your home you know so thinking about your lifestyle your hobbies how much space you need i mean all of those play a huge factor in making your life comfortable so guys i'm gonna be quiet I always say that. <laughs> okay, but isn't that cool over there? They're working, they're leveling the sand, which makes me feel good. I'm leveled over here, but I just wanted to share my feedback on that and just share what I got from it um, on that. So yeah, if I ever decided to upgrade my minivan, I would definitely be 
buying a van and converting it myself, which would be a journey for sure, because um, it's been over a year now since I've been in my van full time. Um, and I do know that long term, it's not sustainable for me. I know long term, I do have um, to work towards a bigger vehicle. And I think that when that opportunity comes, that would be the route that I go. Buying a vehicle and converting it myself. Figuring it out, putting in the sweat, learning what I can and doing it that way. And if I was to get a tiny house on my land, it definitely would be on the larger side of the tiny house with no loss. <laughs> All right you guys i want you guys to have a good rest of your day thank you guys for watching my video i greatly appreciate it and like i always say live your joy travel safely and i will see you on the next video shalom